Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, wherever the heck you are. My name is Thomas Seabird Canary, and I see a uh, Mrs. Doubtfire uh, gif in there. So, hello! How are you all doing this evening and afternoon, wherever the heck in the world you are? Uh, we're having another amazing MailJet Email Academy webinar this morning. Uh, email Academy, break up with bad email habits. So, first and foremost, I got some of my favorite people in the house here. All right, y'all know them. My favorites, Natalie Lynch, senior product manager over at Sins Melgit. Natalie, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Good, good. Having some technical difficulties, but we're getting through it. We're getting through it. That's what life is about. Uh, and Julia, my favorite senior email marketing manager from Sins Melgit. Julia, how are you doing this email? How are you doing this email morning? <laughs> how am I doing this email? I hope this email finds you well, Thomas. I'm doing good. Oh, man. And obviously, my name is Thomas Stever Canadian. So thank you for joining us as always. And we've got some more fun, super amazing people in the house as well. Let's go ahead and talk about them really quick, shall we? Also, in the uh, questions and support chat, we've got Anastasia joining us and Alex. They've been joining us before. So we're super excited to have them as well. Also, Laura, Dale, and Kara are hanging out on the sidelines as well. So they'll be dropping some links for you and talking about any other pertinent things that are uh, important to the subjects. But uh, all right, cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and step out and make sure everything is running as smoothly as possible. I'll be back for the Q&A. But Natalie and Julia are going to hang out with you and talk about breaking up with those bad email habits. Is it me or is it you? I'll see you guys in a little bit. Is it you or is it me? Um, okay, let's get started, shall we? I think we shall. Um, okay, our first poll, and you're just going to put this in the chat. What's your favorite romantic comedy? I need to know. I recently joined a March Sadness bracket. I don't know. <laughs> Have I told you about this? It's like a romantic comedy bracket, and people just, like, vote of, you know, um, like, which, like, a whole bracket of romantic comedies. And, like, you know. That's again, amazing. Yeah, it's really fun. Um Oh, the holiday. That's a good one. That's a good one. What's your favorite one, Julia? Gosh, I mean, I'm a sucker for like a sleepless in Seattle. You've got mail, you know? Yeah. I love Tom Hanks. What is, what's yours? I, I'm i more about the calm than the rom, so I got to stick with Billy Madison. I, I oh, doesn't yeah. exactly fall in, but I like the calm more than the rom, so Billy Madison all the way. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's absolutely true. I can quote Billy Madison. We can we can do the next webinar all about Billy. Happy first dates, Adam Sandler for the win all the way through. <laughs> Love him. Okay, I can keep going about this, so we're gonna get started because I will get started. <laughs> we can do a whole <laughs> more. <laughs> um, so today on Email Academy, break up with bad email habits. We are gonna remove those rose-colored glasses. It's time for some tough love. Um, and just get right into, um, you know, what you should be doing with your email strategy. So we're going to go through how to meet cute your way into getting new subscribers, finding the right person through segmentation, um, figuring out whether it's time to rekindle or break up and how to move on and work on yourself or live happily ever after. So <clears throat> ready? Here we go. That was supposed to be a gif of the Benny and the Jets scene from 27 Dresses beta. Technical difficulties this morning. <laughs> Gifts don't work in PowerPoints. So Not on our past. side, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have another poll, Natalie. Over to you. We do. Let me pull. Uh, I'm not seeing the poll tab. Are you seeing the poll tab? I'm not, but ah. well, we can just talk it out and ah. then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing the pulled tab. So we'll we'll throw it in the chat, right? We what is what is that you struggle with the most when it comes to uh email habits? Are you struggling to segment or finding the right filters? Are you struggling to engage um potential suitors, <laughs> engage contacts? Um, what are you struggling with the most when it comes to landing in primary? Okay, so we got engaging content could be one. Like, are you, are you boring your dates to death? Okay, click rates. Oh. Yeah. Engagement rates, yeah. Really keeping people engaged is hard, but there's so many emails hitting our inbox. So standing out is, is important. And a lot of that comes down to who you're emailing. It's you true. Know. It's true. Well, we hope um, a lot of this, what you're going to take away from today was going to help with those issues. Um, of course, 
please put any uh, questions you may have in the Q&A chat, um, or not in the chat, the Q&A section up at the top, um, and we will get into that. Yeah. All right, so first we're gonna go with our meet cute. Um, so in a movie, this is the serendipitous way two characters meet um, and it sets up their journey, right? Um, the bad habit here is that your impression, your first impression might be a little lackluster. Um, so in email, this is more of the subscription form where you should be getting your leads, your new, um, new subscribers to your newsletter, um, you know, and if we, in case you missed it, we um, did a whole email academy specifically on subscription forms. Uh, we will drop that in the chat for you to take a look at and to rewatch. Re so, um, you know, whether it's to sign up for your platform to get a discount, um, you can add subscription forms to your web pages or landing pages to get those leads flowing in. Keep in mind that double opt-in is key. Um, we will keep reiterating this. It not only helps you. Um, make sure that the e person subscribing to your newsletter list is subscribing with a real email address um, so that you actually have like a valid contact on your list um, and avoid spam traps and all that bad stuff. Um, but it also makes sure that, you know, they're actually going to be engaged with you. If they're taking the second step of subscribing to your list, then you're most likely going to have an engaged person on your audience, which is, I saw, like we saw, a big problem for a lot of people. Um, and then you want to welcome them. You want to tell them what you're all about. You want to give them um, a good first impression, genu genuinely. Um, think of it as like your hostess at a restaurant. If they make a bad impression, it's like, oh, setting the tone. Um, so, you know, if they signed up, if they just signed up, they want to hear from you. They want something from you. So what should they do next? What do they need to know about you? Um, any important links, any important content, um, you know, the, the world is your oyster here. Don't overwhelm them, but at the same time, you know, don't come on too strong, but at the same time, they want to hear from you. Um, Natalie, I've got a sneak yes. peek of something I heard. I am. We're going to do a sneak peek of a feature coming soon to MailJet, and it's going to kind of build on that. How do you get them interested? How do you, how do you collect those details to really get in the inbox? Um, so that you can get that double opt-in, you know, we're, we're talking about mutual swiping right here. We want that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So we're going to pop away from the demo or from the PowerPoint real quick. Whoop, wrong button. So many buttons. Let me get the right one window. Here we go. Nice blanket. Thank you. It keeps me nice and warm when I'm working. Okay, it looks black right now because I haven't hit play. We are not having any other technical problems yet. <laughs> but something we want to share with you is MailJet will be bringing to you shortly landing pages. Um, and this is an, a feature ad that really helps us build that full life cycle. And for those of you trying to collect content, it's really making that first engagement. This is something that will be so crucial to really bringing it full circle. So as always, we're gonna have those pre-built templates. I'm gonna show you one that I already kind of built so you can kind of see what it looks like to get your users engaged. Landing pages in email marketing are really important for that first step, for promotions, for, I don't know, how you signed up for our register webinar today. That's a landing page we put out with a contact form. So as always with our landing pages, you can go as custom as you want, you know, really dive in into those details, have all of those things that you need to build something beautiful, but easy. I'm not a designer and I can get into this and create a landing page that can be live in minutes very quickly. And that helps getting contact forms live and in the wild so we can get those people engaging with us, getting their contact details, asking them what we need to be able to segment correctly and really making that first step of, you know, that first connection with our contacts. So the most exciting thing for me personally in this is that uh, you can put a form you've built within MailJet directly in there without additional steps. We just have it. I'm showing it to you right now. I'm going to delete the one I have in there. Um, you can drag your form in there because contact forms are so important to building those lists. And we have the double opt-in built in. You can create your entire engagement campaign through email so that when they fill out the form, then they have the same branding and the same feel, that consistency. So they're not, you know, whiplashed from everything you've been getting them. 
Um, you can create a custom form through MailJet. <laughs> Sorry, answering the lobby there, uh, chat there. So this really allows you to get out there on a landing page without involving developers or if you're a small team to really ensure they're able to engage, to get signed up and to get on your list. That is the first step, right? That is essentially making that profile on that dating app that's engaging enough to swipe right on. That's what we want to do. We want them to hit submit. And once you've done that, you can hit publish. Um, we'll be continuing to feature add on this. So there'll be additions after we release this. But the second you hit publish, you can use it. It's online, it's ready to engage your users and it's ready to collect content, content, contacts, sorry. With this, you can share it to your social medias. You can go multi-channel, you can put it in a newsletter. I, I saw someone earlier saying, if you're in print catalogs, how do you get them into engage? Landing pages is a great way, it's a simple way, you know, throw a link or a QR code so they can get on your, you know, in a, a mailing list quickly. They get that double opt-in and as soon as they do that, you know, they can, they can be on your list. And from here, that's when you start to really welcome them. So this is kind of bringing us full circle, allowing us to really bring that first engagement and set the stage correctly to engage with our users. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm really excited about this feature. Uh, it's coming soon to a MailJet near you. So if you have questions um, about that, throw them in the chat or reach out to us. We're excited to launch this feature soon. All right, let's pop back to that content. I'm so excited about that feature. You know, I'm so excited. So you just, you know, stand a quick landing page up if I've like the, like a new campaign and I don't want to bother, you know, like my whole design team or like you said, like small teams. Um, here we only have a neat small team of two people. And so, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do it for my neighborhood association. We have like a voluntary one. And if we have events that we want people to RSVP for, I'll throw up a quick landing page. It's the quickest awesome. way to do it. Yeah. Love it. Um, okay, so we were gonna go back to, we'll go to the courtship. Um, so, bad habit, you have no follow through. And we know how this goes. You're dating someone and you know, they just like don't make an effort. You know, they don't, they don't um, uh, like set up the next date. They don't, you know, check in and during the week. It's so frustrating, isn't it? So. Um, do this via newsletters, nurture campaigns, um, schedule your dates on a regular basis. And by this, I mean like an automated campaign. Um, so you can just like weekly or monthly or bi weekly, whatever you need, whatever's easiest for you and what your audience likes. Pay attention to this. If this, if any, if you go away today with any note, it's that you're doing this for your subscribers and your leads and your customers. You're doing this for them, not for you. Um, what they want is going to get you farther than what you think they want or like you feeding them what they want. Um, so just keep that in mind. Be a good listener. Um, you know, do the, give a feedback loop. Never, please don't use a no reply to, um, email address. You want to get replies from people. You want to hear from them or you can't improve. Um, you know, I, when you get our newsletters, when you get our e webinar invites, those replies go back to me. I'm looking at every single one. Um, so if you tell me to unsubscribe you, I'm doing that. If you tell me to, you know, um, send you the link for the webinar, because it does not, you know, it, I'm doing that. So that helps me improve in the future if you don't like something or if you do. And then you want to find the right time to ask, <clears throat> oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> For your scheduling on a regular basis, think about when your um, audience is more likely to open or click their emails. When you're first starting to date, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the best days to have a date. Don't you think, Natalie? Yes. You, prime weekend time is reserved for, I know it's going to work out yeah. to some extent. Yeah. <laughs> we're busy on the weekends right now. So you're... <laughs> <laughs> so Mondays and Fridays, not really ideal. Who wants to have a day on Monday? Um, and then, you know, but Tuesdays and Thursdays, those are kind of prime days. Wednesdays too, but you know. When you're asking them, what are we? Just like dating, this is a fine art for your situationship. Um, so the timing is going to differ based on how engaged your... <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the chat. Um, this is going to vary based on each person, if they're engaged, if they haven't engaged. Um, we'll talk about that split in a little bit. Um, but 
take a look at your overall audience and how long it takes them to do something for your product. Um, so, or your brand, whatever it may be. And then do that average as like, and then mirror that in your email sequences, use it to improve, um, your email sequences. Email is all about iteration and improving and continue. Just because I have an onboarding sequence doesn't mean I'm going to change it 17 times between here and the end of the year, you know, so maybe not 17, but you know what I mean? It's always in motion. Yeah. So to say in the, the business world, it's a living document, right? You want to keep updating it with the times, with your audience. You want to make sure it's engaging. You know, if someone's constantly emailing you for a link, update it to put that link in there. You know, it's about automating and really giving people what they want. Right. Right. This leads us perfectly into setting up your app filters. <laughs> the bad habit here is that you're not paying attention to your person, your audience wants or needs. Segmentation is a great way and the only, you know, to narrow down your contact list by using their contact criteria. So you can predefine your segment externally from your email service provider, or you can use it with it, or you can do it within your email service provider, um, just depending on what your um, current like tech stack allows, you know? So this can use and, or, or statements. Um, it's a very weird phrase. But you can do this based on location, their interests, past engagement or behavior, uh, past purchases, your, their domain name, like Gmail and Yahoo people, you know, after all the, you know, Yahoo and Google updates. Hello. Um, other contact properties that you collect on your subscription forms. The options are endless. Um, Natalie, you're going to, I wrote some examples here, like has never opened an email or um, has not opened in three, six, 12 months to get out those unengaged users. Um, but Natalie's going to show us an actual visual because I'm a visual person of um, how to make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in the screen again, so I first am going to caveat and let y'all know that this is my demo account. So uh, segments are limited. They're smaller than you would usually have on an email because it's just me blowing emails from me. Um, but that being said, segmentation is a very vital part of figuring out who you're going to email to. And there's so many ways to segment and testing and playing around with your different segment sizes and who they include is, is very vital. So you're going to see me doing that a few times here. Um, again, this is about engaging the right content, uh, contacts, making sure that what you're sending is going to be relevant to those people. So with all segmentation, whether it's on Mildred or competitor, you have filtering conditions and you can filter based on their activity. So think of activity as how they engage with you. Um, that's, you know, have they opened campaigns? Have they clicked on campaigns? Have they, you know, what, how long are they spending? Um, you can do it based on a specific campaign. You know, did you send out a promotion and they didn't engage with it? Um, have they opened in the last week, the last month? When was the last time they, they really connected with you? You can also do it on contact properties. Um, so you're looking at your list and you have people who, you know, maybe have Gmail in there and you want to leave out the Gmails for whatever reason. Um, or you have people that, I don't know, have a favorite color marked off as pink and it's for them. These are very general, um, but you can set those conditions and then you can calculate to see what that segment would look like. Um, as you can see, <laughs> not clicked in the last one month is 100% of my segment because again, all of those emails are me. <laughs> so really figuring out how I can break that down, email you know contains or does not contain really helps me be specific about who I'm contacting. Typically when you're building a campaign, you have a goal in mind. So you're gonna be able to play with these filters to make sure you're, you know, you see those, that sample segment that you're really engaging the right people. Um, because if your emails land in the box of you know the wrong customer, maybe that you're not targeting, it won't, it won't really engage with them. It's gonna bring your engagement rates down. It's gonna, you know, leave you confused. So when you're building something, really play around with these filters, really figure out, play with the and and the or. It can be kind of confusing sometimes, but you can always test it, play around with it and review it um, to get that, you know, they've done this or they've done this and they've done that. Um, and it really allows you to build out that segment. This is really important because when you're sending, uh, see, I have it down to 51 contacts there. I <laughs> finally found some that fit. 
Um, so when you're really sending, you can build out that segment. And then when you get to the sending portion, I'm going to skip ahead so you don't have to see me playing so much there. Uh, you can hop into an actual campaign. And when you're sending your campaigns, you've designed your contact content, you, you know, you have your subject line, and you have that segment. This way you're only sending to only that segment. Um, as you can see, you can you can have multiple segments in there that you can select from, and you can also calculate real time. So maybe you set your segment five days ago and you wanna see if it's changed. Maybe you have five, 10, hopefully 2000 more people that have clicked on the email since then. And we will calculate at the time of send. So it's capturing everyone on your list that should be sent to. And that's how segmentation really can benefit engagement and making sure that you are getting the attention you deserve in the inbox. Yeah, and I think, thank you for that. I think um, all of those are so useful. And you can either start with your segment and like look at your data and say like, oh, this segment would be great. We should do something for them and create a campaign based on that. Or you do the other way around, like, oh, we have a campaign, which of our audience would best fit this? Um, but again, like you're keeping your um, your audience in mind first, right? You're giving them what they want. It's not, one, email's not one size fits all. And we have a great call out in the, the chat there. It's like segmenting and opens, maybe not as reliable these days because of all mm -hmm. the security and stuff. So more towards those clicks um, really gets those engaged users. Because for those of you who don't know, we have all those security bots in there opening emails for us, letting us know if they're safe or not. Um, and it, it can distort engagement rates. Right. Okay. So now we're going into the bad habit of you lose the spark. You got to rekindle that flame. You know, people aren't opening, people aren't clicking, people are unsubscribing, um, which sometimes isn't a bad thing. We'll get to that. But the re engagement are for contacts who are still on your list, but they're not doing anything. Sometimes they are, you know, they're not taking any action, they're not engaged, they're just kind of dormant. It's very frustrating. And they're just inflating, or I'm sorry, not inflating, but um, they're skewing your engagement data. And so, you know, it looks like people aren't engaging when really, you know, you just got to get those unengaged people out of there. Um, I really wish this gift worked because it makes me so happy. But, um, you know, some people get back with their exes. It does happen, right? Like, it, you know, <laughs> it does happen and sometimes it does work. So there are a few different ways you can do this. Um, you could check in say, hey, you haven't, you know, we see we haven't engaged in quite some time. Is there anything we can do? Are you looking for something in particular from us? Um, or you could offer to unsubscribe them. We see you haven't engaged. Do you want us to remove you from your list, uh, from this list so that you don't have to receive emails from us anymore? No worries. You know, it could be a mutual breakup. Or, you know, you could do something like send them completely different content than what they've recently received, different promos, product updates um, that you'd think they'd enjoy. So, you know, um, this LinkedIn keeps offering me premium again because at a discount because I quit my premium. But, you know, it's kind of enticing because they're giving me such a discount and I'm unengaged. So, you know, might get me back. Honestly, it happens all the time. Uber Eats says it. They always send an oh, yeah. email after you cancel. That's like, we'll give you 50% off for three months. Yes. <laughs> Sucks me in every time. <laughs> like the um, guy you met at the bar and, you know, they keep DMing you or like in watching your Instagram story. <laughs> but it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it can go either way too. It can be like, okay, they're paying attention, but it can also be like, oh my gosh, give up already. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? You should take the hint. You should take the hint as emailers and just eat them off your list. Yes. yes. If you are too much, much, they can find less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my favorite slide. First of all, because I'm moonstruck. Second of all, because um, bad habit is you can't get over the breakup. But, you know, it's not you. It like it, it could be you. It could be them. It it, it could be mutual. How do you get over it? And you know, I saw a lot of people on there that you're dealing with hard bounces. You're dealing with unengaged contacts, which we're talking about right now. Listen up. You know, engagement. These are all ways that are going to improve that. Your bounces. Um, 
so one like your esp sh so there's a difference between hard bounces and soft bounces soft bounces are just like if the mailbox is full if you know it timed out or something like that um they might still be deliverable hard bounces are like no that email is not good no longer valid um now you're gonna go into this so i won't go too much into it but um I have started also segmenting my hard bounces out or like manually removing my hard bounce. And it's helped a lot, you know? Um, so just keep that in mind that your bounces are actually getting off your list. Um, validations, clean up your lists, you know, like once a quarter or even more than that, if you have big lists and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of movement, um, just, get those out of there. And Natalie will do a demo shortly of, you know, what that looks like. Look at your campaigns. What went wrong? Yeah. Soft bounces. Maybe they try hard bounces. Uh, <laughs> um, what went wrong versus what went right? Um, you know, where did you see a huge spike in engagement that went really well? Um, maybe that's what they want. Maybe whatever you did in that campaign um, is exactly what they needed. What went wrong? Did you get a lot of unsubscribes from a campaign? Don't do that one again. Whatever you, you know, look at that. <laughs> what happened? Don't do it again. Um, you know, again, it could have been the content, could have been the subject line, could have been the, um, I don't know, the time you sent. Could be anything. Um, consider some introspection. Work on yourself. You know, email therapy. You know, what are you doing? How are you approaching your emails? Um, and is there something missing for the other person? And then you kind of decide when it's time to move on. Like we said, you know, um, it's okay to remove the unengaged. We all, we've all been there. Um, Natalie, you want to talk about validations a little bit more? I think the visual there is so helpful. Oh, my gosh. And it's such an awesome tool that I, just, I, I want everyone to use it. So I'm going to steal the screen for the final time. All right, um, let's get this going. So validations. Validations, if you're not familiar with them, essentially validate your contact list. So within MailJet, you can do it on a contact list. You can also upload contacts if you have a bulk one you wanna test out. Um, and you can take a look at, based on your contact list, variety of data points that really help you ensure you're targeting the right people, you're removing the right people, um, and you're understanding who maybe you should give another try to. So as you can see, I have one calculating, but I ran it twice in one day, so I can kind of show you what it looks like. We have a few different options, but first off is that visual, right? It lets you know what the sending risk is. Is it a high risk, is it a low risk? It calculates that based on a few different things, like is it a disposable email address? Think of those as, you know, like you can sign up for a free email really quickly. Is it a role based? Is it admin at, you know, that can change over time, it can be replaced. Um, and then you can also download the results. And I don't know about you guys and products, I am a sucker for a lot of data. Too much data is overwhelming, but this is just the perfect amount. You can see a quick hop in my thing, in my, there you go. I'm hiding the emails. So that blacklist is the emails just for data sensitivity here. But as you can see in, in here, we have, I can, I can filter to deliverable based on all the email addresses. Are they deliverable? Are they not deliverable? Why aren't they deliverable? So you can see I have no MX records were found. That means that email just doesn't even exist. Uh, you know, that that's a problem or they don't have it set up correctly. So they're not receiving those emails. Um, and, and that's a chance to, you know, remove them from your list. You can also tell, uh, is it is it a close to? We have that, did you mean? So if they, maybe they fat fingered when they were typing in their email address and it was close to. Um, is it disposable? Is it a role? Again, those role bases, especially with organizations, um, can change over time. Is it a catch-all? I'm guilty of this, which is why so many of them are medium risk, because I have a catch-all email address, which is when people create that star at domain name. So you can put anything in front of it and it's deliverable. Those are risky. Those are people like me who have an entire email address that's like, you know, if I want a coupon from that place, it'll go to, you know, coupon at my domain name. So, but those are hard because they're not always engaged. It's not my primary box. So this data really allows you to figure out 
Why are you hard bouncing? Why are you soft bouncing? Do you have people that aren't engaged because it's a role? Maybe the email has gone bad over time. Maybe it once was engaged and it's no longer engaged and that's why. This data is really, really helpful to clean up your list. The industry says that about once every three months, take a look at this data and see who you're sending to. And if you're sending to the right people, get rid of the people that are hard bounces, get rid of the people that are undeliverable, get them off your list. We don't, we don't need to try, you know? So that's validations. Um, I'm very passionate about it. I like data. Because <laughs> uh, I, I think like this is like bad email addresses are the root of a lot of issues, deliverability, engagement, you know, you'd be like, oh, you know, you can easily write it off. Like, oh, I haven't cleaned my list in a while. It's fine. It's not like I've been added to um, like a block list in past lives because there's one spam trap on the list once and it just snuck through and it's risky. So um, I think there's two ways and, you know, keep in mind whatever works for you unsubscribe or just like deleting these contacts from your list. There's two options there. I personally do not, when it says like, did you mean, I don't, I don't add this to my list still because you don't know if someone was doing it on purpose or on accident. Um, and basically from a permission standpoint and safety for myself. Um, right. so that's Never it. assume what someone's saying in a conversation, right? right. Context matters. That is so true. <laughs> Just bringing it right back. <laughs> um, okay. And now we're going to live happily ever after. Um, and I really hope that this meme is not um, ringing true for everybody. It only took 12 years and three months to get someone to become a loyal member of your audience or do. It's from when Harry met Sally. Don't get me that confused. I saw that expression, Natalie. Um, I've seen it. Okay. We'll talk after this. Wow. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there are no bad habits after, well, there are, as long as you don't, there are no bad habits allowed after you're living happily ever after. Okay. There's no excuses. Um, you have to ride off into the sunset together. Um, constantly, constantly, constantly. Like I said, you are iterating, you are improving their experience. Um, you're investing in yourself. Make sure, like we said, clean your lists. Um, you know, update your brand, you know, your designs, you're making sure you're um, accessible in all inboxes, uh, you know, invest in yourself and what you're providing to them um, and their own experience. Show them you care. Keep that spark alive. Just, you know, regular touch bases, regular dates, um, regular check-ins. It's so nice. Send them flowers. Just kidding. Natalie and I both like to receive flowers, though, if anyone's oh, yeah. listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to, you know. <laughs> uh, keep that spark alive. Show your appreciation to maintain their loyalty. They're, it's what, they are what's keeping you going. What is going to keep them coming back for more um, every time? You know, so um, just keep in mind, keep in mind what they want, what you can provide them so you can compromise and work together towards that goal. I would say in dating and email, I always say it's authentic to who you are. Yes. Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> We're not here saying what they want to hear. We're here adapting how we communicate to them so that they're hearing what we want to hear, say correctly, whether it's an email or in real life or coworkers or really anyone that just applies in blanket life. Yeah. <laughs> Be authentic. Be authentic. Be authentically yourself. Um, okay, great. Then we're going to jump into Q&A now. So start putting your questions yeah, in the Q&A chat. Oh, and, you know, we got to give a big intro and round drum roll for Thomas. Woo! His favorite time of the day. I saw your line. Say it so. Okay. Also, just want to throw a really quick shout out. There's some folks in here that were asking about uh, uh, our webinar, that uh, the feature of forum building. I just dropped a link in there if you want to check, take a look at it. So we don't get a moment. Also, I want to answer that question earlier. Someone was asking, hey, uh, we had some issues getting in here earlier. How do we watch this webinar? Come right back to this page. All you got to do is come right back to this page and you can watch this webinar. Also, keep an eye out for our uh, our MailJet uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, we actually drop a bunch of our of our webinars in there. So actually, I'll drop you that link right now so you can make sure you can continue following along with us. And then we can answer some of those amazing questions. So just drop that YouTube link in there so you can follow along. But all right, let's get into it, shall we? 
Also, a quick shout out to Alex and uh, and Anastasia answering out and knocking out some of those amazing support questions. We couldn't do this without y'all. So y'all are amazing. Couldn't. Um, okay. Most of folks. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ooh. And Dale's been in that chat providing links nonstop too. So. Yes, for yes, sure, for sure, you. for sure. Also, everyone, please uh, make sure you upload the ones that are more pertinent to our subjects. But let's go ahead and look at this one. Uh, this one actually Anastasia answered. But uh, Miriam wanted to know, what should I do if I see a, a high number of hard bounces? Let's see. Yeah, Anastasia yeah. was recommending. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what should you do if you see a high number of hard bounces? Get those out of there. Yeah, clear them out. Um, unsubscribe them. If you want to make sure that they, you know, don't come back, if you're worried about that, again, like whatever's going to be most helpful to your um, ESP or like however your ESP works and what is helpful for you and your data. But yeah, exactly this. Also, that reminds me, the working title for this webinar was actually spring cleaning. And you know, mm -hmm. it's spring. So remember to keep doing that spring cleaning. Yeah, it was. And then we went hard on the rom coms. So yeah. Mostly so because Julia wrote a beautiful blog article, how to lose <laughs> a contact in 10 days that I read like five times. No, you did it. No, I did. I made my husband read it too. Oh, Beautiful. It's like uh, <laughs> sifting through those DMs, sifting through them. <laughs> all right, all right, moving on, shall we? Um, dum, 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 dum. Okay. Oh, another engagement one. Carolina wanted to know what would you consider good practice in identifying high, medium, and low engaged audience? Would high engaged be up to three months of engagement, six months, medium, and low 12 months? This is a good question. Um, I think that depends on you, actually. Like, in the, um, what is specific for your use case? Um, you know, some people who, um, for you know, let's say like mortgage companies. You know, I used to work for a mortgage company. Um, our engagement was fine, but like people aren't getting a mortgage every day, so like you know, they may not get it for years. So um, that use case is different than my, you know, current one or someone who's in e-commerce, um, which is going to be much more, probably be much more engaged, more promotions, you know. So um, I would take a look at your past campaigns um, and then just kind of monitor it from there. What would you consider good practice in identifying high, medium, low engaged audience? Um, and then just like compare your click rates probably and your unsubscribes. Um, and then even like customer data of how often they're coming back or visiting your web page or your website. Um, and Natalie, anything to add there? Yeah, I would say consider your customer behavior and your use case, right? When I'm obviously, I work for an email marketing and I know that if you're not engaging in high volume times, if if you're not engaging monthly, that means you're not engaging your content, the contacts. Right. Right? So, you know, like I, I know marketing from like, I work in a marketing, so I know how often they should be. So consider your use case, um, you know, for, I know like, there's some brands that I subscribe to that they release lines every spring and that's when they're really expecting engagement. So I get less emails from them during the summer months. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a build that into your use case and your user stories to really understand how often do you want them to be uh, interacting and, and is that lining up and what do you need to change to make sure it does line up? Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Oh, Carolina's got another good one. If you gotta, well, we, Carolina's got so many good questions, so we gotta, we may, we may have to focus on some other ones. But Carolina want to know, um, she want to know, how are you measuring open rates with Apple privacy policy that was rolled out? Ooh, Natalie was like, oh, <laughs> are these estimated open rates to account for iOS mail app privacy policy? Julia, yeah, we get this question on a daily, don't we? The two of us tag team this question all the time. So much. How um, are you measuring open rates? <laughs> They're not completely irrelevant anymore, but. Go ahead. Keep going. No, you can take over. <laughs> We're like, we don't want to. <laughs> um, this is a bad date right hard, here. <laughs> right. Um, I think this, it's very hard to look at open rates. I, I know we use the example of segmenting based on opens. I don't really do that. Um, I do based on like bounces or clicked or um, not unsubscribe really, but you could, um, 
and then you might want to check on like domains um and also if you're able with your esp i don't know who you're using um but um if you can see like the time that your email was sent and then or like delivered we should delivered not sent and then um when it was opened or clicked or no let's just do opened then i think you can like narrow that down until you know what's automatic who what the bots are things like that yeah um, there's a ways to get around it but yeah i mean i'm most familiar with mailjet so i'm gonna use that as an example but that's that's my biggest recommendation if you do need to understand open rates if you're looking into that uh a lot of esps provide that date time stamp of when it was delivered versus when it was opened um and there are very few people that are refreshing their email for per you know marketing email just waiting to click it so if it's opened within two seconds three seconds throw that out that's not relevant throw that out <laughs> just unless they take an action later like they click five minutes after or mm -hmm. you know um visit your website or like you know at a different different time which with a lot of those ESPs, you actually can see if they opened it multiple times too. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they opened it within three seconds and then later opened it, that later open was probably them. Yeah. Um, so, and, and keeping in consideration, it's not just Apple Mail, like organizations do it too with their security. So I would say broadly, when you're looking at any open rate, if it was clicked milliseconds to seconds, think about how quickly you're clicking on your email the second you get it in your promote, like, you know, if it's a marketing email um, and, and filter on that because you can still see that engagement. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay, let's see here. Nat wanted to know, you mentioned not using a no reply at sender address. How do you filter spam bots? Wait, I'm sorry. Can you put that one up or? Yeah, I'm going to that one up You mentioned here. not using no, um, how do you filter spam bots? Um, I, I do it manually, to be honest with you, or um, it, it's not um how, so you can have like okay i didn't mean to have to use no no reply at sender blah, blah 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 for your sending email address but well I, yeah i think that like i think it's deterring from your customers to like reach back out to you i wouldn't um even if your reply address is something different um and then there are ways to get around it um i um mailgun has like a way to filter all of this noise that you're only getting active, um, like actual responses. Um, and I also like have a lot of stuff set up in my inbox itself to like filter out people that are like a ticket, um, out of office, um, you know, like people who are regularly not going, like sending me the same thing over and over. So this requires work. I know it sounds um, like tedious, but it's much worth it or much more worth it than um, because the responses I do get from actual customers, I wouldn't, I need those. Like I want those rather than like trying to not pay attention to them at all. Yeah. I, I think the takeaways and make sure it's easy for your, your contacts to, to contact yes. you, right? Like you want to make it a t like you want to have a conversation with these people if they want to engage. Um, you can also add like a different reply to address to your emails. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's different ways if you're really worried about like that heavy volume. Um, but make it easy to you know be be available. Yeah, or yeah. yeah, like she said, put like put in your put an email address that they can contact you in the email. So like this is coming from a no reply, but please you know send us an email here if you want here. And it's an actual email address um, so that you can get that feedback. And whatever you do, do not leave your contacts on red. Yeah. <laughs> red on. I'm a pun person. I go all day. <laughs> yes, you are. She is so punny. So punny. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Jennifer wanted to know, ooh, do you want to talk about this? She wanted to know, can you talk a little bit about deliverability? How and what tools can you use to check for deliverability issues? Mine, from my personally, from what I get to work with on the uh, uh, the technical account manager side, big fans of Google Postmaster tools. Uh, oh yeah, big fans of that. You got? Did you get? What, what do y'all use? Validations one, huge. Mm -hmm. um, inbox placement testing um, is big, um, and I'm using. It. And you guys have to keep in mind we, you know, we work with email tools, so not that we're promoting, but like at the same time, this is what we're used to, so this is what we're going to reference. Um, so I don't mean to sound like salesy, um, but 
it's just like the <laughs> it's the the tools I'm referencing are like what I use every day. Um, inbox placement testing uses a seed list to um, before your campaign goes out to um, see where your email's landing in what inbox, the primary folder, the spam folder, things like that. Um, and I will take every opportunity to say authenticate your domain, get yeah. your SPF records set up, get get your text records in place, get your, make sure you're And if you don't know what that is, we've got blogs, we've got documentation. Even if you don't use us, we want to help you get into that inbox. So just authenticate your domain, please. <laughs> Silent clapping for that one. <laughs> um, yes, please, please validate those domains. And we're to James Brown, please y'all don't validate those domains because uh, we want you to become better centered. So Awesome, y'all. Okay, let me see here. Is there anything? I'm going to let uh, Natalie and Julia see if there's any ones that we've missed. Do like, you want to pick anything that we might have seen here? Let's see. There's an interesting one I like that. It's how do I use email marketing with print since most of my campaigns are from a print catalog that is mailed to customers. I mean, I know mailers still work. I'm 100% I'm aware of that because the amount of stuff I buy after checking in my mailbox, my physical mailbox. <laughs> but I also would prefer to go paperless. So Julia, how would you attack that? I'm just randomly throwing you under the bus here. If yours is, can you use a QR code that like people scan and then it goes to your subscription form so they can also sign up for your newsletter. Beautiful impl implementation of that, yes. <laughs> Because omni-channel is like the way of the future, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, even though they're getting the print catalog, which I do love that you're still doing that. Um, I think it, I think it could be a, like a cool opportunity for you to do a QR or um, a way for them to sign up. You don't want to put like a URL on the print catalog because that looks bad. And who wants to, you know, put in there? Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I think I think there's opportunities there. Although I will say, sometimes URLs are useful. I know I'm gonna go back to like my side project. We have like a voluntary neighborhood association and we do mailers and we put URLs on there because we have an older population that maybe isn't as familiar with how to do QOR codes um, and prefer mailing still. So we do both. And I think there's a good way to mix it so that you can, I think, you know, people are always moving towards more digital, but I think there's something that calls attention to getting in the mailbox. Um, so yeah, I think QR codes are a great way of doing it. Yes, that was one thing I was gonna say is, yes, please, please go easy on the older generation, y'all. Teach them email, teach them <laughs> just slowly, just like, I'm trying to do it for myself, for my older family and friends and stuff like that, and explaining what email is and all this fun things. But yes, most importantly, please practice that double opt-in because uh, yeah, mailers can be interesting. So awesome, awesome. Okay, Julia, since Natalie picked one, do you wanna pick one before we uh, wrap up here? Yeah, I'm looking through them. Um, I love, I love a Q&A. Um, okay. <laughs> we need these people on more panels, y'all. Maybe, uh, oh, that, that reminds us, email camp is coming up in the fall, so keep an eye out for that, so. Um, let's see. Um, what would you conclude when you have a consistently high open rate? Let me share this. Um, but do not get any response to your email. Um, I don't think that means necessarily anything. There are sometimes I don't get um, responses. I think you just want to um, give that option um, so that in case, you know, people love to tell me if I've made a typo. They love to tell me that they loved um, a certain subject line I used. They like to tell me that, you know, something's wrong with their campaign or something. Um, so you just want to give that ability to them. Um, consistently open rate or is your other how is your other engagement your clicks your unsubscribes um your visits to your web pages um look at that because you know it's not all about responses but you know that helps all right all right all right y'all awesome well natalie julia I had a fun time today talking about some uh, some rom-coms. Uh, I think we may need to make a, a master list of uh, all the best uh, rom-coms 
may need to uh, do a rewatch of some of these this evening, actually. So maybe actually do that. I have a list in my phone. I'll send it to everyone. And apparently, now you may need to catch up on someone. So now you got some homework you got to do. God. <laughs> awesome. Well, our viewers, thank you so much for taking time out of your work day to listen to us, watch us, hang out with us. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have doctor's notes. So uh, <laughs> hope you got to uh, join us however you got to. But uh, give us a big round of applause for Nally and Julia for always just coming through and making a super engaging and super fun uh, presentation. It's always fun to work with some of my favorite co-groups. So round of applause for them. Thanks, y'all. And um, I'm just going to put my email in the chat if you have any more questions or if your question didn't get answered. Um, it's julia.ritter at cinch.com if you uh, have any questions. And Natalie's here from there. Fun. <laughs> through mine in there as well. Uh, you can always find me on LinkedIn as well if you want to connect and talk more about email. We're big nerds about that subject. We are. We love, love it. it. Love it, love it, love it. Also, we have another podcast. It's on mail. It's on Mailgun. It's called Emails Not Dead. I'm wearing the t-shirt right now. Make sure you give it a listen. We talk about email marketing, deliverability, all that fun stuff. Uh, also, keep a lookout. Like I said, email camp is coming. It's coming in the fall. Just keep an eye out. We'll send the save the date pretty soon. All that fun stuff. So you'll hear from us. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and uh, I guess we got to get back to work, shall we? But uh, Nally, mm -hmm. Julia, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you guys Thank soon. you. And everyone, if you want to rewatch it, come right back to this page and you can rewatch mm -hmm. this webinar. Just come right back here. Everyone, thank you so much. Hope you have a good one. Take care. Thanks, y'all. See you next time. Bye. Bye.